Hey guys, it's Cash, and today I'm going to start off with a Bible verse from Zechariah chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. This is what the Lord Almighty said, Administer true justice, show mercy and compassion towards one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. Okay, so after my video yesterday about the surveillance state and me talking about the things that I've been going through for the past two years that I've really noticed over the course of the past two years, um, I think it's safe to say that we are not living in the way of the Lord here in the United States and all over. This is a global thing. This is now turned into China is a total um, surveillance state, facial recognition, all of that stuff. And it was brought to my attention yesterday that um, the casinos and a lot of hotels also have this um, facial recognition as well. Um, and it is as a form of security, but it's pretty invasive security. So they have you, if you've ever gone to a casino or hotel or anything like that, they have your face to, and that's where the, um, the iPad, where the, poli the cop takes the picture, that'll bring up all those things, um, those places that you've been. Um, so that kind of puts information into the cop's hands, like, Oh, so you're a gambler? You know, they might say something like that to you because that is the nature of this security is to know exactly where you've been. And you'll be like, what? You know, it'll be very confusing to you, but that's why, because they know that you've been there because of the facial recognition. So I'm going to break this Bible verse down on a macro level and then on towards like a personal level based on what I'm going through. Um, so show mercy and compassion towards one another. Now on a personal level, this is something that I struggle with. I'm a pretty forgiving person, um, but I, I've gotten to the point, I needed to, to start practicing compassion more. I need to be more compassionate towards others in understanding them rather than forgiving them and trying to change them. Um, I, I need to be more compassionate and realize that people that do things to me, that is because that's where they're at in their journey or where they're at on a soul level. And it's not so much has to do with me, but their perspective and how they see the world. So that is how I'm going forward, um, I'm going to try to practice compassion in my life. Now on a macro level with this whole surveillance thing, how can we be compassionate towards people that are invading our privacy? So I try to understand this in terms of this has been going on since 2001 when the terrorist attacks happened on the towers in New York. Um, I feel that in terms of safety, that this is something that needed to be done in a way, but where it's at right now, it has become so invasive. There is absolutely no privacy. I don't know about you, but I don't like thinking about something and then seeing it as an ad on my Facebook on the side toolbar or searching for something and then all of a sudden getting bombarded with all of these ads. Also, things I'm looking up on my internet search history. These are all things being forwarded to the NSA or to police or what have you, whoever, these letter agencies, who, who, whoever is in charge of surveilling you has all this information about you. And it's 
just, it's pretty out of hand. Um, I would like to make a YouTube video and not have people call me when I say something that they may disagree with or not like. Um, I have to put my, my phones on airplane plane mode because people will start calling me just randomly. Random numbers, you know, this phone. Oh, look, this call right there. So, um, what else did I want to talk about today? So, oh yeah, so do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. Do not plot evil against each other. Okay, so I think it's pretty safe to say that our country, we live, we are being oppressed as a society. We oppress the poor. We oppress minorities. We oppress women. We oppress anybody that we possibly can. Foreigners, obviously, because if you have contact with a foreign person, that's going to land you on one of these terrorist watch lists. It reminds me of a story that my friend told me um, of her friend that was married to a man that was Iranian and his parents had government ties in Iran. And one day she opens her door and there's these two guys standing there asking her what ties she has to so-and-so in the Iranian government. Now, I mean, I understand that it's something for concern, not really. I mean, something that should be investigated in, but that's her family, like the man's family. So when she has children with this man, does she have to cut off ties with these people because they're from a different country? And that's just where we are at today in terms of surveillance so I also want and that's pretty that's pretty specific to come to someone's house and ask them about their ties to a person so that should have been a light bulb to her telling her they're tracking your communications they are watching you essentially so um so church church and state that's another thing that I wanted to talk about with this whole thing. So let me okay. So there's supposed to be a separation between them. And lately with what I've been going through and what I hear other people's stories is that anybody that's doing anything of a spiritual nature or, you know, trying to connect with a higher power, that is being, will find you, you will find yourself being gang stalked for these things. And that's something that in church, church is a part, it's an institution, it's part of this system. They have infiltrated most churches, these perps, gang stalkers, you know, people that are not of God. And they're just basically in there to distract you from hearing the word of God. I can tell you about a dozens of situations that I've had, harassment situations right there in church. Um, one, I, I spoke about the lady behind me with the daughter with the cat ears on talking loudly behind me especially during um, the readings and stuff, coughing. Um, then I had a woman who three, four, five weeks in a row sat across from me. First time, it's a coincidence. Second time, okay, coincidence. Third, fourth time. And that's how they condition you to show you that that stimulus is there as harassment purposes. So... She was in a polka dot dress and in my book and my blog, I talk about how um, I was also in a polka dot dress. So that was coming from that. So that was supposed to trigger me to behave in some way, you know, get my mind thinking, get my mind off of everything but what was going on in front of me, hearing the word of God. 
Um, what else? There was just tons of different things that were happening to me at the church. Even the priest was like using NLP words and it just got to the point where like this is supposed to be my place of worship and it's been completely infiltrated by these people. Um, but yeah, so there, it, it's coming to a point where there is going to be no, and this is what I fear, that there is no separation between church and state. They don't want people worshiping God, and they're going about by covert means now of stopping that, of distracting people from it in, by any means possible. If that means sitting behind them in church and coughing, the whole mass, then that's what they are going to do. Scary times because the ultimate goal is to get rid of Christianity completely. That is what they are pushing for. I don't know if they will live long enough to see um, the, you know, this whole thing come to fruition. But it's definitely something that they are pushing for. And it's not going to be this violent overthrow of Christianity. It's covert. They're going about it in covert ways. So that is all I have to say for today. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. And God bless.